are here at Midtown Comics with Fred Van Lenti, the writer extraordinaire behind Psylords, Valiant's latest and greatest new sci-fi adventure. It's a, it's a bit of a crazy book you got here. Thank you. We, we try. You try to be crazy. That's good. <laughs> Tried you know. and succeeded. <laughs> Stay interesting. Yeah, you excellent. Know. So, for anybody who isn't aware, give us like the elevator pitch on Psylords so that everybody's on the same page here. Sure. Well, the uh, the basic premise is that it's a science fiction outer space prison break. Okay. Excellent. Four uh, astronauts wake up in this strange facility somewhere. They don't know uh, how they got there or really who they are, but they have these strange new powers and they use them to bust out. And fresh haircuts. And and yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and a total lack of hair yeah. and, and shoes, for that matter. Uh, and they they that's have sweet outfits though. That's yeah. right. That's right. They at least gave them some you know no orange jumpsuits in this particular facility. Well, there's one. There's one. That's right. That's right. That's right. But they're all color coded. Yeah. They're all very stylish. Very trendy. Uh, and then they've got to figure out how to bust out of this prison. And the prison, I should point out, is based the size of a planet. It's right. called the Gyre. The Gyre. Now. That I, I ask you that, but I, as if I haven't already read it. <laughs> because you know, wait a minute, I thought you said before wait, the interview right. when the cameras was, were off. That was completely different. No, well, so it's crazy, and it's a it's a really cool ap- atmospheric and action packed launch to the story because we are very much in the mystery with them. Right, like nobody knows diddly squat. Uh, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean that's what that's sort of one of the fun things about characters with like I. I like um, dealing with memory a lot in my writing just because, okay. to me, that's where our sense of self comes from. Totally. You know, we mm-hmm. are basically an accumulation of things we've done that we remember we've done and things right. we want to do in the future. Uh, and so when you rob a characters of that, you immediately put them in an extremely stressful and therefore dramatic uh, situation. And what's fun is that with characters who have amnesia like these is that they're learning who they are as the reader is also learning who these brand new characters right. are. So it's sort of a, I always like to, to have a symbiosis between the storytelling and the reader themselves. Yes. Well, I will say you gave them some pretty cool powers the whole yes. time. I was a yeah. little jealous. I was like, okay, I could I could be into creating psychic guns with that's my, right. Yeah, that's like, right. That was pretty yeah. really cool. Yeah, Art, artisan can make things. Tank is sort of the, uh, he can create force fields and he's very strong. Hazard is sort of the, uh, the the ninja with uh, claws and stealth and That's beacon is is not only super intelligent she also has a variety of sort of light powers and each one of these powers uh, since the book is called Psylords each one of these powers uh, interface with the human psyche and sort of an, and tap into okay. different aspects of the human psyche in sort of an interesting way yeah Hazard makes an immediate impression. Uh, because she puts claws to use very quickly. Yes, she's very stabby. And you made her, uh, stabby. You made her American, which I love. That's right. That's right. Like, oh, yeah, the she's crazy very ones. violent. That's yeah. right. Each each one of the, the astronauts comes from a different national national background, which we sort of explore as we get more into the into the series. We don't know what their mission was, and neither do they. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they'll be learning what that is and whether they can accomplish it as the as the story moves along. Well, and it's interesting because when you take away like their memories but they still have kind of a cultural identity it right has an interesting impact mm-hmm. on how the characters are shaped with like all that I, th- I think that's unique you know yeah and i mean what's what's fun about it is that is that it's really kind of foxhole situation because they don't really know each other or if they do they don't remember right. who anyone else is but they they bond very quickly because they're in this i like i like to put characters in ridiculously stressful situations <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. pressure boxes and just yeah. see how they react see what happens you know it's shake it's, it up yeah well it's Wait, the old shake, cliche you know you really that's right <laughs> shaking it up with our lava lamps uh the uh you know, it's, it's the old cliche that you really know what, what a person is like when the chips are down. Yeah. You know, right. Everybody's kind of the same when everything's going awesome and they're happy. It's when, it's when the, you know, uh, things get out of control that, uh, that the real character comes out. What I think is cool is that you also have... Things start off rough for everybody. Like, we get our little introductions. We get a couple pages for every character and everything like that. And somehow, while things are getting mildly better, they get dramatically worse. <laughs> yes, that's that's a good way of putting uh, it. Without <laughs> saying anything, because you know that's you still have to right. check out the book. But things go bad real quick, and uh, pear shaped, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now it kind of sets them off on their their journey, their personal journeys. So, what exactly? Uh, I mean, without telling us too much, what what do we expect here? What are we looking for? Because now, I mean, we know. 
I mean, it, it's kind of a weird situation. I guess the hook is kind of spoilery. I, I mean, I guess, uh, but but the 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 first issue. This is an ongoing series, I right. should say. Yeah. So we have a we have a lot of uh, room lot of to develop coming. to develop uh, the story. But as I said, this prison is the size of a planet. Right. So there's lots of other races and religions and factions, and okay. I, I don't. It's a little Game of Thronesy, in that nice. there are all these different <laughs> factions running around right. that they've got to contend with. Different priorities, and yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and once they they find out what their mission is and how it directly threatens Earth, mm-hmm. spoiler alert, uh, they sort of have to figure out how to manage all of those factions and sort of uh, they may end up having to take over the entire prison in order to accomplish their their goal, Very the Gyre, cool. and and the, the Gyre is a fun setting also because it's like it's this dying star and. Um, it's all these spaceships um, orbit around it. It's mm-hmm. what's called a Dyson sphere mm-hmm. for you science fiction fans out there, which is a theoretical uh, <laughs> <laughs> theoretical uh, uh, construct uh, in which you have a bunch of objects that are all powered off the same star. In this case, they are all uh, barren spaceships okay. that have all been caught in the orbit of, of this vampire star. And vampire star. Uh, it's that's sucking a, all the energy that's a from great it. term. Yeah. And uh, um, and so each ship sort of has its own society, and, and, and in some oh, cases, different really cool. alien races on it, and new challenges. And so we can just kind of can just kind of keep going forever. Yeah, just never get out of jail. That's, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. Well, you kind of have a lot of little fun sci-fi touches in there. Um, in the beginning of the first uh, panel, you see almost looks like organic and mechanical yes. sort of yeah. a mix in there, and you definitely see some aliens as well. Um, can you tell us how, like, how deep is that going? How much uh, like sci-fi can we expect in here? Well, at this point, I should definitely praise praise <laughs> uh, Rano Guedes, the uh, our brilliant, brilliant yes. artist who comes yes. up with these incredible designs. I keep trying to stump him with the with these crazy monster concepts and alien concepts and tech concepts and just keeps, you know, blowing me out of the water. And so the design of the prison is, I mean, I think I said some sort of vague, like... <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's round. It's like Mobius or something. Around. I don't know. There's uh, walls. Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> <laughs> You can't get out. Uh, and, so the, and so the design of it very much is his is his work. And so what's cool is, is that is that as we meet more villains and more uh, sort of these some crazy monsters, like this one in the third issue that I don't know how to describe, it just like... Sh- makes things into crystal and it's kind of this floating like Ooh. flower thing and it's okay. totally <laughs> insane looking. Like a lot of cool aliens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of scary aliens, a lot of gross aliens, and a lot of sexy aliens. Oh, okay. You, know, you, need, you need, need the full game. Right? You need the full everything. This is all the same alien, right? <laughs> <laughs> just putting that yes. out there. <laughs> if only. I think Renato's head would, just, yeah. would go like that. But yeah, and, uh, and what's cool is that... Um, it is very much tied into the larger Valiant universe, and right. so it's unlike the original '90s series. Uh, this is sort of the last '90s book of Valiant that the current iteration of Valiant decided to bring back. Mm-hmm. And that original series is set in the future. This one is, however, set in present day, and, and really ties very significantly into the rest of the Valiant universe. And you'll be seeing those threads sort of like appear. And um, the first named sort of other name, we're, we you know we, we sort of end up we stay in the in the gyre for a long time, but the first named character uh, doesn't show up. I think until issue four, okay. other main oh. character, and she's very. Oh. <laughs> I said too much. Sorry, never mind. Forget it. So Forget I said that. Oh, right, can we erase that? <laughs> so going back. <laughs> <laughs> so going back, we've got. You said that this is one of the last Valiant properties that kind of you're breathing new life into, from the original run. You know? Right, from the original, from like, the original 90s, stuff. you know. So what can fans look forward to that are fans of the original, mm-hmm. you know? So I reread the whole... I, I, this is now my third... I've done Time Walker and Archer Armstrong, and this is now my third Valiant book that I've sort of rebooted. And in each case, I went back and reread the entire 90s series, because right. virtually... You know, Valiant has all those still Best on file. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Some you know. work reading some comic books. Uh, yeah. Can't can't do that, honey. Oh, Doing work reading sorry. comics. <laughs> can't take the garbage out. Uh, but uh, so uh, so there's a lot of like Easter eggs. Like there's a lot of names. Like the, like the, there's a there's a group called the Star Watchers that yeah. runs the prison, which right. comes from the '90s series. The color coding 
if you'll see everybody's guys we mentioned before we've yeah, got like yes, hazards okay. red and, and tank is green and so on and forth so forth that comes from the original valiant series everybody was sort of color coded to their various mm -hmm. powers uh before uh as someone pointed out online 20 years before the lanterns did it mm -hmm. uh, in dc so we're sort of cutting edge there in the in the early 90s yeah. uh and uh but i mean to be honest with you beyond that not much <laughs> there's really no connection between this series and the 90s and also because the ni the 90s one was set in 4001 ad right. and sort of the right Ryan, different world. magnus robot fighter world yeah. and this is set in, in the 21st century well, I uh, actually wanted to ask you about the colors because in the original one there were just three. Right? That's right. It was That's red, right. orange, and yellow. Yes, bastions. They were they were they were bastions. I just had to lose up the bastion scouts and gunners. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. I know uh, nerdy things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you win. <laughs> we need to light this up. We have a winner. <laughs> Um, so I, you've you know obviously added another color, green. <laughs> That's right. Um, That's right. And I think I lost one. I think we didn't use one. Oh no, I guess we did. No, you're right. Red, yeah, yellow, yeah, you're right. Yellow, you, got a, you got them yeah. all. You're right. You just Sorry. Sure one thrown in. Um, was that like intentional? Were you like I want to kind of add my own? Like uh... well, I the 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 powers in the, now we're gonna now we're gonna do the deep cut yeah, okay, in the right. nerdery. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, is the '90s powers were all like one guy, like one person would be really strong, another person was sort of a scout, so she would like uh, scout. She go ahead, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, look for Good villains eyes, or yeah. whatever. Pull up binoculars. Because in, <laughs> in the future, in the, in the original Silorids, and and I did keep this to some degree, they were essentially like like. They they were sort of benign dictators. They were mm -hmm. they were okay. full of nanites that gave them all the hardcore powers. If you if you guys are familiar with hardcore from from Valen, Valen Universe, these guys are the not the word hardcore, that. but the hard. The, yes, core. H A R D <laughs> yes. core, which is much better, uh, <laughs> slightly different. But uh, uh, they sort of went out into space and basically declared themselves to be the world super cops or the, ga the galaxy super cops and and a lot of the series that was fun about it was these them being sort of benign dictators mm -hmm. um i didn't want to use the same power set so the colors i mean i i wish i could tell you like i put a lot of thought into this <laughs> the colors, but that would be a lie yep. that would be a lie. i think tank in fact was originally blue mm -hmm. okay but we changed it to green because i can't it just didn't. It didn't work because it against the space background, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. the dark purple of outer space. That. It became really hard to differentiate tank from the from the background. That makes sense. And like Hazard, like kills people, so she's red. Right. That's yeah. Awesome. There you <laughs> go. It hides the blood. <laughs> Everything. You know, Beacon has light powers, so sure, yellow. Yeah, why not? Sun. Sun color. Yeah. That the seems the right. two dudes are just kind of randomly threw colors. <laughs> <laughs> the the leftover the color. Thought, yeah. Exactly. Color. You guys get. You guys you know get that. these. Exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think tank was like a. Was like a robin's egg blue and just did not work. Oh, that's cool. Well, you can see kind of the little blue. I don't know if you guys can see it on yeah, the cover here. Yeah, the little hue you there. Still got the little blue in little there, but birds. it does look like a nice little backdrop compared to the green. So the green doesn't have like a significance. He's not like a, let's jealous. See, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the accountant. He takes care of all the money. No, he's, like, <laughs> well, he is sort of a very nurturing personality. He's sort of the guardian of the group. Mm, so okay. I don't know if. Yeah, that, oh, no, that's yeah. unbelievable. That was good. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, but I, about this. He's like, let me put that down. <laughs> what color have I used yet? That's what I. That's that's pretty okay. much how that decision making process was. Wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So, what's it like for you? Because you've obviously played with Valiant's toys uh, <laughs> more than once, with their permission. With the permission, <laughs> of course. Uh, it's a nice chest of toys, and they let you take them home, borrow them, bring that's them right. back. That's right. So now. You're out in space, though. It's a completely different frontier from, yeah. like, Archer and Armstrong, which is, like, history. And, you know, Ivar, to a degree, is sure. kind of bridging those. Yeah. So now you're just completely out there. So did you look to any sci-fi to kind of inspire you a bit with this, to get your mind set for a different landscape in Valiant? Yeah, I mean, to a certain degree, the series comes out of Matt Kent's terrific run in Exo Man of War, and that was largely set in, in outer space, so I took right. a lot from that. Uh, I just from Renato's terrific sort of painterly style, I, I was really inspired by French uh, graphic albums. Like mm -hmm. I really love the Yodorovsky, uh and unfortunately I can't the, the, the name of the artist is eluding me. Meta Barons, mm -hmm. okay. uh, which is a terrific book about again these extremely high levels, almost like apocalyptic superpowered yeah. people, and so that's definitely in the vein of Psylords. So I sort of see it as a as a sort of um, you know. I, 
sort of a very European influenced book. I can even though I'm some. not a I, I I don't want to make it sound like I'm some expert in in, right. in French yeah, graphic yeah. albums, but <laughs> but that that was sort of what my main inspiration. Well, came you mentioned from. like Mobius, you know, and stuff like that. So it's definitely got that kind of feel. Definitely because it's got like you mentioned the natural and techno elements right like, yeah that's another melding into each other yeah exactly but it's always always makes you feel nice and icky yeah. that's <laughs> right that's right at one point the one, artist in one of the characters describes the the uh, the, the prison is an Aztec sex dungeon <laughs> which, yeah. which is uh, which I, I feel like very accurately that describes so Renato's yeah. style which obviously is a line I wrote after the art came in right. you saw that and you were like oh man nailed yeah, it. You, well, yeah he nailed it when I said Aztec sex dungeon you knew exactly what I was talking yeah. about that's amazing we go why did he have that reference <laughs> that's right in Cabo right the Aztec sex dungeon yeah that's funny well if you yeah. guys haven't looked at the inside of the book the art is fantastic it um, really brings like a like a realism to it. Like it's uh, kind of like puts you in the shoes. Well, he does. He does he's, he's one of those rare people who can do these lovely sort of photo photo realistic expressions, and yet does it has also excellent comic storytelling. Yes. Yes. It's really tough to find that combo in one person. Yeah, his uh, his Shadow Man work was just yeah. insane for doing that because it was. I mean, obviously that's different because it's more supernatural and stuff like that, but it was still very good at. Immersing you in a world because, like, that was my first show. Well, now there's a book that could use an Aztec sex. <laughs> yeah, you're, there you go. See, that's where you pulled the reference from. You were coming through, and you're like, you know what? Just turn that up to 11. That's right. Mm-hmm. Go exactly. a little crazier. Exactly. Cool. So, were there any, uh, I don't know, were there any like horror vibes you're going for here? It's kind of, yeah, spooky. very much so. I had just seen the, the Nicolas Cage movie Mandy. Oh, that's when I started working on this, which is this terrifically like I mean, it's it's a terrifically Gonzo sort of eighties throwback yeah. uh, horror movie, and I and I was like with a lot of like crazy like there are these crazy bikers that are covered in spikes. I've heard it's and, absolutely and, and insane. I really enjoyed it. Like yeah. it's it's pretty nuts, uh, and so I wanted that kind of like almost hallucinatory effect, which is again very effective when you're dealing with characters who. Um, have amnesia and it's like yeah, where am I stuff. why am I in a dungeon this is very strange you know <laughs> um, do you find it challenging writing characters with amnesia because yes sometimes I, <laughs> I feel like I've tried to do it yeah and the struggle for me is always making them likable because if a character yes. doesn't really know themselves sure. it's hard for you to but you managed to make them all likable and well <laughs> yeah and, and, and I mean not to give too much away they have a foil who they're right. talking to in the prison right. who does or at least acts like they know who yes that he mm-hmm. knows who they are right um and so that that helps that I sort of cheated yeah oh. yeah <laughs> propels things a little bit just yeah. a little just enough yeah and it, when you have four characters who all have the same problem they immediately start bonding yeah you know I, mean? That's, so, I mean that's like yeah, that life grab, yeah yeah exactly they all, you <laughs> all end up gravitating to each other I mean, haven't we all been shaved bald and tattooed and, and given superpowers and yeah. thrown into thrown a dungeon in and our yeah. shoes taken away? It was rough. It's very I mean, common. I made it through, but, you know, <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's worked out. Yeah, that's, well, I'm the blue know. one, you know? And <laughs> that's, right, yeah, that's right, that's right. Blue that's right. Skylord, we, didn't, you know, we can only shoot you in the daytime, though. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the, the dark background, you're just going to get absorbed. I'll get lost in space. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. right. Visually. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I think that's, uh, can you think of, uh, anything else you'd like to add, Henry, while we've... I'm trying to think. Which, okay. Choose your favorite baby. <laughs> Who is your favorite child out of our Psy Lords here? Mm. I mean, I like the crazy ones. I like Hazard. The yes! Best. <laughs> I mean, Good answer. She, she, she's... When you have an ensemble cast, people tend to, you know... St- you still end up having one sort of carrying the weight of the story, and she right. sort of does. And and be, you know, I guess I, I do like writing women characters, so I guess I'm okay. inclined to, to to favor the women. But I mean, they're all terrific in their own way. Yeah, I liked the female characters. They didn't feel like like archetypes of Great. females. They felt like real fem like persons. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would be friends with Hazard. In Excellent. Life. Yeah, I, like I met it. her, I was like, yeah. okay, she, she knows she's, what's up. I break fine. out of a I'm glad you'd be her. friends with the That's one right. covered in blood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah, I know her. I want to hang out with her. <laughs> what's her cool. deal? Yeah, she seems cool. <laughs> Give her a couple like drinks. She gets some real done. That's right. She's very efficient. Okay. That's right. She'll get into the club. Some, yeah, somehow. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I don't want to know how. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's right. 
They've got good health insurance, you know. <laughs> exactly. They can hire. They can hire another bouncer. Yeah. <laughs> They're not hard to find. Um, well, yeah. All right. So that's well, cool. uh, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you awesome. so much yes, for thank you so guys. Guys. joining us. No problem. Got uh, it. For you guys watching at home, you can pick up uh, Silords. Comes out today, right? It's, it's out. It's, it's out in the out world. To, it is. It is already out. By the time you see this, it will have been in your hands. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you will, will have already give them homes, loved it, please. Yes. And uh, we've got signed copies, so be sure to check out some signed copies in store and online for a limited uh, time. For a limited time, some good stuff here. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time, guys.